G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. I'm Jesse. And I'm Drew Z. And today we're giving you Just, Just the tips. tips. So welcome back to another edition of our weekly footy tipping show. Like we do every episode, we're going to go through the brief scores of how we went last week. Again, not a great round for myself. I only scored the 5 out of 9, uh, although an improvement from last week is still pretty stanky. Druzy, you did better than I again. You got 6, and you're really stretching out the margin between us at the moment. I think you were up to 13 total tips, which ranks you at 32nd. Uh, I'm at a total of 9 for the ranking of 275th. Uh, Nonetheless, subscribe to my footy tipping content. And, <laughs> and with Dad Watch as well, uh, Dad's struggling as well. I think he's in the 200 somewhere rare with a total score of 12. Still doing a lot better than me. Uh, frankly, I think at this stage, all I can hope for is to beat my dad. This is probably the best start I've ever had to a footy tipping season. I've been tipping with my head more than my heart, um, which has cost me results. I would have tipped Melbourne last week if I actually had a thought, but I went with the brain instead of the flight. I don't know. I felt like Melbourne were going to win. So I'm kicking myself on that one. And obviously, I tipped AWS to beat Frio. So, you know, I'm letting myself down, but the formula is working so far. Yeah, exactly. I do love a ballsy tip, to be honest, as well, which really doesn't go so... <laughs> oh, that sounded gross. <laughs> Moving on from that entirely, uh, we got the weekly winners as well. We'll shout out as well. So someone did tip a perfect nine. I think there was a multiple people as well. But a, a young fella called Drewy Boy Sag scored a perfect nine with a margin of 13. So that was outstanding tip uh, tipping. Uh, so well done to you. But the overall leader is actually someone called Bridge Boy 2 who has 15 correct tips already, leads me by six, and a cumulative margin of three across two rounds. So he's off by two and then one point as well. So absolute madness. Good on the lad. He's doing well. We'll shout out as well the fantasy winner, King Doodle, as was my high school nickname, uh, averaging 1979 uh, across the two rounds, which is outstanding. I did really, really bad in fantasy. Again, I'm just going to stop telling people what I get in fantasy because I fucking suck. <laughs> Before we get into this week's tips, there's two things I want to plug, as they say. Uh, first of all, check out our sponsor, Manscaped.com. Still get 20% off using the code TRUEFOOTY20, uh, all caps, all one word, and you also get free shipping, elite male grooming products as well, which I use regularly as well. So if you haven't checked them out, go do that and use our discount code. And secondly, I'm also going to plug, we had Druzy on the Colwell podcast earlier, uh, well, I was going to say earlier this week, it was about two weeks ago, it took me a while to edit it, but it's finally up on the Colwell channel, so uh, if you go check out in the description or in the comments of this video, you can check that out. We have a good yarn for about an hour or so. Yes. Very good content on Cold World. Cold World, I can never pronounce it right. First time, but it was a good chat. And yeah, make sure you go check it out. All right, first game of the round is Brisbane versus Collingwood at uh, Marvel Stadium. Of course, a lot of conjecture about this, uh, about the venue for this game because of the COVID situation in Queensland right now, which is El Scario, as they say in Spain. Uh, but as it turns out, it looks like, yes, yeah, so they're setting on Marvel, Marvel Stadium. So kind of a home game for Collingwood, but also not really because, you know, they prefer to play the MCG. And then the future fixture is also getting switched to the Gabba between these two later in the year. Um, obviously, Lions coming off a heartbreaking loss to the Cats albeit controversy uh, involved as well, uh, but they're seeing it 0-2, not so comfortable where they are, and the Pies were much improved last week, uh, beating uh, beating the Blues on Thursday night, if I'm not mistaken, and some of their guys like Brody Grundy returned to form, which is really good. Who are you more convinced by based on their form so far this year? It's been tricky. The Lions have been unlucky to be 0-2, I think. They've, uh, especially in that Cats game last week, in that fourth quarter, they were very unlucky not to get the four points in the end. I've seen a lot that I like from Brisbane, but... After last week, Collingwood returning to form and their stars, like you said, Grundy, Degoe. Oh, I don't know. I actually don't know. I'll go Brisbane. That's it. A tricky call. It is away from home, but they really need this win. It's going to be tricky for them um, staying in Victoria and not getting to go back and see their families, but... Yeah, I'll go Brisbane. I'm going to agree with you. I think Brisbane will be a bit angry and bitter at being 0-2. I don't think they're playing poorly enough to be 0-2, uh, although they were pretty poor in round one. But, you know, unlucky last week. I can't see them settling for 0-3. Mm. Um, it's, it would be really hard for them to, to claw their way back after that. So I'm going to say the Lions by 21 points. Also, a little bit of info I think came out today. Uh, Jordan to go in, Brody Grundy actually have been sent for COVID tests because they've been unwell. Um, so uh, a little bit of a question mark over their availability. Probably don't have COVID, but if they're unwell, um, you know, 
know, that could throw things out for Collingwood. Next up, we've got the absolute blockbuster in North Melbourne hosting the Western Bulldogs. I'd chip out North Melbourne every time I play, but obviously they're, they're, um, they're in some horrible form at the moment. A really unconvincing start to the year, but albeit, you know, a young rebuilding team under a new coach. Uh, they were really poor last week, though, against the Suns, who, um, you know, look light years ahead in terms of their rebuild, although they have been doing it for longer. Um, but, you know, a 10 goal loss to them at Metricon, they're looking like the worst team in the comp. And the Bulldogs, on the other hand, probably have the best midfield group on paper at the moment as well. And Bonds and Pelly did an absolute madness as they beat the Eagles in what was probably one of the games of the year as well. Mm -hmm. North paying eight dollars for this game, Drewzy. Um, as far as upsets go, how much would this shock you if North somehow beat the Bulldogs? Mate, I'll chop off all my hair if North Melbourne win this game. It's not going to happen. So that's what I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. With uh, Manscaped's elite ball shaving razor. Yes, Kanga Kanga Kanga. Poo poo poo. <laughs> the Bulldogs will win this one by seventy nine points. Oh, I thought you were going to rhyme it. I think it is a by seventy two. That would, uh, that would have been much better. Yeah, yeah it, uh, it's hard to disagree with that. I'm going to put the Bulldogs to win by 45. Again, although Norton and Bruce bobbed up for a few goals, hard to imagine them kicking a massive score, which they would need for a 79-point win. So that's just my little question mark on the dogs. But yeah, 45 points, um, very easy win coming up. Next up, we have another top-of-the-table clash. We have the Adelaide Crows hosting the Gold Coast Suns at Adelaide Oval. Um, and obviously, two of these sides were bottom five to six last year, Adelaide winning the spoon, but they have looked pretty good so far, to be fair to them. Mm -hmm. um, the Crows weren't bad against Sydney, but I think uh, watching the game, it was still clear Sydney were several levels ahead, to yeah. be honest, um, and that's not really disrespectful on Adelaide. Obviously, they're, they're rebuilding at the moment. Um, they've had some really encouraging forms from their youth, but also Taylor Walker is a player that's you know 11 goals from two games. Everyone's talking about him as well. The Suns backed up a solid performance in Perth with a massive win over the Roos, and they haven't really put a foot wrong yet and I think they've probably elevated themselves out of the bottom four talk mm -hmm. at the moment Adelaide's at home though uh, who are you vibing for this game? I think Adelaide which would be like a semi upset but Adelaide at home they're not going to want Gold Coast to come in and spoil their party especially after a couple of weeks ago beating the uh, yeah a grand final side uh, so I reckon, yeah, I think Adelaide will get it done at home and have quite a, a big win. I think it'll be a tight one I'll say Adelaide by 16 points. Nice one. I'm going to disagree with you here. I uh Though I'm not very confident because you smashed me in tipping so far, but um, <laughs> now nah, look, I think Gold Coast are at that point where they're just not accepting not accepting losses in games that are winnable. You know, I think they're ready to take the next step. And I think they're going to be switched on for this game. Um, I think they're going to win this by 22 points. Next up, we have uh, what is surprisingly shaping up to be one of the uh, tastiest fixtures of the first month of football. Um, not many people would have pegged Richmond versus Sydney as a potential finals preview, uh, but it's kind of looking that way mm. when you look at how good Sydney have been. It's going to be an awesome test for them as well. Obviously, they've beaten Brisbane at the Gabba. Was it a fluke? Based Based on round two, probably not, but obviously they're coming up against the best team in the comp now, um, so we're going to get a really good look at where they're at. Richmond have just kind of done what they needed to do, disposing of Carlton and Hawthorne fairly easily. I think they still have another gear to go to as well, mm -hmm. um, but Sydney have been really, really fantastic so far. So how long can the form last with Sydney? I think it'll they'll be competitive all year. I don't think they're going to fizzle out, and I see them being competitive in this game, but ultimately, ultimately I think Richmond will run away with it by 28 points. 28 points. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with you. At the MCG, Richmond is a different beast. They've uh, obviously played their first two games there as well. So, well and truly used to it. Back in the swing of things, I think they're going to get the job done and win by 18 points. Next up, we've got Essendon hosting St. Kilda at Marvel. Two sides coming off kind of disappointing losses. Um, Essendon were pretty average against, you know, arguably the form team that comp right now in Port Adelaide. Um, but to compound that as well, they've got some mad injuries with Jai Caldwell was one of their most promising sort of stories to come into this He's year. He's looking real good. Yeah, um, playing well as well uh, and <laughs> Dylan Shields also picked up a potentially serious injury and Sam Draper as well I think um, is going to miss as well so three you know pretty important players uh, mostly the first two I did tip the Saints last week and I famously don't tip the Saints enough <laughs> according to the Saints fans out there uh, and they really let me down so um, yeah not uh, not great but um, suddenly their, their first win against GWS as well doesn't look as good because of how GWS were quite poor in, in Perth yeah. as well. So I'm not going to talk down on St Kilda. I think they've proven themselves to be a good side. Looking at this though, do you think Essendon and North have kind of emerged as the worst two teams of the comp? It is only round two, but... Yeah, I think Essendon are going to find it hard to get wins after those injuries this weekend. Like the Brockman and two of their key midfielders who have shone this year. Yeah, they probably are the two worst sides in the comp. Adelaide yeah. have shown what they're capable of. Essendon and North Melbourne really haven't showed up so far. In terms of this game, you'd think the Saints should deal with them quite easily, given the potential that they have and how hyped they are as a side in general. They'd want to win this game quite comfortably to legitimize them as a side. I'll say St Kilda by 29 points. 
Yep, I think that's a pretty good summary. I don't think Essendon are seriously poor. I just think the competition's so even at the moment that mm. if you're a little bit off your game, you're kind, of, you're kind of looking like one of the worst two teams at the moment. I think with their injuries, it really sniffs out any chance they yeah. have for, for a win here. Um, and, you know, I shouldn't speak so confidently about tipping because I suck at it, evidently. But if the Saints don't win this, this is a massive alarm bell. So I'm yeah. going to tip the Saints by 27 points. Next up, we have potentially game of the round. West Coast hosting Port Adelaide at Optus Stadium. Uh, the Eagles were undone, um, as we talked about on the Drew Footy Show. Go check that out. By um, a, a very good dog's performance. Um, the midfield sort of ran right around the Eagles, who were uh, just more efficient. And that, that was kind of... You could sort of see the game going that way. The Eagles are very efficient with like limited midfield dominance mm-hmm. and that was you know ultimately nearly won the game Port Adelaide uh, being talked up as you know one of the best teams in the competition and rightfully so made a prelim last year and although they played the two arguably the worst two teams in the comp they also haven't put a foot wrong um, some seriously good young players on that list George Yardis Zach Butters um, it's just endless talent at the mm-hmm. moment at Port this will be their first real test of the season I'd like to think hopefully the Eagles put up a good fight Yeah. how big a win for Port would this be or I guess either side I think this cements a top two finish for Port if they can win this. At round three. I reckon. Well, Eagles away is probably the hardest fixture that you can get, really, in the AFL. So if they can pull this off, it says a lot about where they are as a side. And they haven't looked off a beat at all this season so far. (laughs) I always seem to tip the Eagles, just because they always smack us, and I can see how good they are. But they always do have, have a slip here or there. They slipped last week. I don't think they'll fancy going to one and two at home. Again, game of the round, probably the hardest one to pick. I'll back in West Coast, though. Really? Yeah, I, th- I think Fort Adelaide can win. I think it's 50-50. I like to look at the head-to-head between two teams uh, when they play, um, and Port Adelaide smacked the Eagles the last two times they played. Both games, I think the Eagles really, really off form, so I don't know how much you can read into it, but we know that they don't hold fears at off the stadium. I'm going to tip with my head. I'm going to say Port Adelaide probably going to win this by, I think it was 18, 19 points I've got written down, so we'll go with that. But if the Eagles win, I wouldn't be surprised either. And mm. I think it'll be a really significant win for, for both sides if they win. Next up, we have a grudge match. And this time, it's personal. Carlton is playing Fremantle at Marvel Stadium. And Carlton love breaking Fremantle hearts. They've done it the last two times they travelled to Perth. Mm. But this time, it's in Melbourne. Carlton probably filthy with the two losses they've had. Uh, mostly because their fan base is really proud and ambitious. And they don't really tolerate losing. And they've been rebuilding for a while. So they're getting sick of it. But... Honestly, I don't think they've played poorly. I just think uh, maybe they could expect more out of guys like Cripps and Doherty, but for the most part, they're sort of playing to a standard that I think is acceptable uh, with the two games that they have lost. Fremantle overcame a frustrating round one. You were filthy at the Demons' performance, which probably looks a little bit better now, but then obviously really good performance against GWS in Perth last week. Fife probably going to miss, is that right? He is, he's out. Pre-season, though, you said that you thought Fremantle were a better list than the Blues or a better team this year. Where does that sit now, two rounds in? Uh, uh, in the balance. <laughs> Carlton have looked really good against two strong sides. They've been unlucky, unlucky with their draw, really, because if they probably had the sides at Freo, they probably would be 1-1 one and one as well. Good point. The last two meetings with Carlton have ended in heartbreak for me, but I think Freo don't really get a look into in those games. Freo... Probably the worst performance of that season when, uh, who was it, Mark Murphy kicked that goal, mm. which beat us. That was probably the worst performance of our year. That was balls deep into the Ross Lyon era when all the players weren't playing for him. They nicked it at the depth. And it took a bad umpiring call and another shocking Freo performance last year for Nunes to kick the goal to win them the game. They've taken the cake on the last two times, but I uh, I think Freo can do them here. We, he play a very gritty style and we have... Statistically, one of the best midfields in the comp. Kicking goals will be hard for us, especially with how stacked uh, Carlton's defence is looking these days. It's going to be a very tough win, um, and I still don't know who I'm going to tip, so I'm just buying time by talking. (laughs) Um, Obviously, Hart says Frio. Head is 50-50. If you like, do the ratios and that. I'll tip the Dockers. I'm back in the boys. How many points? It'll be close. It's always going to be close with Carlton. I'll say... I'll go eight points. Yeah. Okay, I definitely think this game's winnable for Fremantle, but the, the midfield is so good. Adam, Bra- uh, Adam Brayshaw. Adam Brayshaw. <laughs> Andrew Brayshaw played one of his best games for the club, if not the best at AFL level he's, uh, he's played so far. So I think there's so much talent, but it's just in... It's not balanced with the forward line, and if Fife misses, I just think it's going to be too hard for uh, for them to generate a winning score. Carlton equally will be going into this with their eyes lit up saying we need four points. Mm-hmm. I think the Blues are going to win by seven points. Next up, we have the penultimate game of the round. The Giants are hosting uh, Melbourne at Canberra, Monica Oval. Um, so the Giants are obviously coming off 
Uh, an admirable loss, you'd look like, in round one. Um, didn't quite go to plan, but, you know, put up a decent fight against a team that will well and truly be in the finals, you'd think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, you know, went to Fremantle uh, and, you know, probably should have lost by more. Fremantle let them off the hook, kicking like 11 goals, 21 or whatever it is. I think in terms of their list, I think they're too good to be rebu- rebuilding. There's enough young talent on the list already. Enough good senior players. I know they have, like, Whitfield out and stuff like that, but... You know, they probably should be playing better than they are. And I think there might be some serious pressure building on Leon Cameron, especially if they drop this game. Uh, By contrast, Melbourne are 2-0 and uh, just beat last year's finalists in St. Kilda. They may have found their mojo. To what extent can the Giants sort of find their mojo this week? They need to, but I don't think they will. Melbourne were looking sharp against St. Kilda. GWS have really cooked this window that they've had to make a, a premiership run. Slipping down and it seems like that trend is going to continue. And I, yeah, I think Melbourne will get the... Get the cherries or whatever the bloody saying is. Chocolates. Chocolates. Mm. No one will win this game pretty comfortably, I think, and it'll be very stinky bum time at GWS. <laughs> I'll go the Demons by 30 points. Uh, yeah, I'm going to agree with you. I think GWS certainly can win this game because I believe in their talent, but uh, Melbourne are a confidence team as well, and they're, they're playing with confidence now. Good quality list. Can't see them losing this game. 28 points to Melbourne. Did I just start that by saying, GWS, I can see them winning this? And then I went, Melbourne, can't see them losing this. <laughs> Finally, we've got next week's uh, Easter Monday game. So this game probably won't even be played by the time we record our next video. But um, True. You know, we're going to have a crack anyway. Geelong versus Hawthorne at the MCG. Cats responded with a win last week over Brisbane. More of a must win for them. Um, I think I said on the Drew Footy Show than Brisbane because, you know, home game to GMHBA Stadium. So rarely do they drop those games. Um, but they're one and one even if there was a bit of luck involved. That being said, they've got their own adversity now with, um, you know, Dangerfield's out to round five. Jeremy Cameron's out for the first month or so. Um, and potentially Gary Rowan. I'm not sure what the latest is on that, but um, potentially he, he could get miss. suspended. Yeah, uh, you think I think it was two week. weeks, was it? I might be right. I'm yeah. pretty sure it's too big. I don't know. It's not like I make football content. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side of the ledger, Hawthorne put away by uh, pretty comfortably by you know the reigning champs in Richmond. So you know probably not one you could really criticise them for. And their round one was a decent performance, although you know terrible second quarter I think it was against Essendon. So another team that's hard to get a read on, um, and it also looks like Will Day is injured as well, um, which hurts because you know they want all their young talent playing. So he's been looking very good. Yeah, as well. seriously good performance in round one with Geelong's um, you know outs. Are they vulnerable in this game? I don't think it's because they're outs. I think Hawthorne just match up very well against Geelong. They just always have. They've always got that history and this game is one that I always look forward to every year, Monday at the MCG. Usually around 90,000 or 80,000 there. Won't be this time. Geelong be vulnerable due to their injuries. It won't help them. Um, but I think Geelong should get the win narrowly. I think Hawthorne stack up well against Geelong, as I said. I'll go Geelong by... 26 points. 26 points, yeah. Pretty much agree with all of the logic there. i got a feeling Hawthorne are going to take it up to them, and Geelong haven't been convincing yet. Um, not poor, but not convincing either. I think this will be close. I think Geelong is going to win, but it'll only be about, by, by about 12 points. Mm-hmm. Who's your upset of the round then? Uh, upset of the round, I'm going to go with that last game I mentioned. I think Hawthorne are a chance to knock off Geelong. A chance. I'll be very surprised, but it is upset of the round after all. Can I copy you? You may. Before we go, you do do a multi every week, Jersey. So take us through. Uh, wait, how did you go last round? I'm guessing you didn't win. No, no. <laughs> okay. How did you go? How are you going to go this week? Well, we'll see. We'll see. These are hard to get nine, especially you know you got to get the odds in that. You don't want to go with all the favourites. You want to increase the odds. Betting sponsor, we're still waiting for you to give us the call up. But I've gone Collingwood to beat Brisbane, even though I tip Brisbane. Uh, Western Bulldogs to beat North Melbourne. Adelaide to beat Gold Coast. Richmond to beat Sydney. St Kilda to beat Essendon. West Coast to beat Port Adelaide, Carlton to beat Frio, Melbourne to beat GWS, and Geelong to beat Hawthorne, paying $37, I think is the lowest odds so yeah. far. But, you know, we'll see. They never come in. Um, but yeah, betting sponsor, hit us up, please. All right, that's it, guys. That's all we've got time for today on Just the Tips. I got comments uh, recently saying, Just the Tips? Why does it go for 19 minutes? Clearly not Just the Tips. <laughs> we give you analysis. Yeah, we give you analysis. Get off TikTok. Have a bit of attention span. It's good for you. Read books. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you check out our sponsor, manscaped.com. Also, check out Drewzy's channel, where we also do our weekly wrap um, about the football round. Um, and it's called The Drew Footy Show on Drewzy's channel. Link in the description. Go check out our interview on Colworld as well. Link in the description. And we'll see you in the next video. Link in the description.